Morning, everybody, um, and thanks very much to Zoe and the Big E-Commerce um, Conference for having us along here today. My name is Orla McDonald, and I'm joined by Jenny Hyde. I'm part of the new business team at NotOnTheHighStreet.com, and Jenny is our partner communications manager. We'll go into a bit more of what that actually means in terms of our role as we go through it. But basically, what we're here to talk to you today and what Jenny's expertise is really going to be about is how to present your products online in a way that customers are going to be happy to click through and make the purchase, which is hopefully at the end of the day what we're all in the business to do. Um, we're really happy to be here today. We don't normally get um, out and about to chat to people as we are online based. We're back in the office um, working from there, but brilliant to be here. And we're happy to take any questions that you guys have as we go through, but we'll also be around for a while at the end of, the, at the end of our session to chat to anybody in a bit more detail if they want. Um, not sure how familiar many of the people in the room are with notonthehighstreet.com. Hopefully um, people will have heard of it and um, as mentioned we're doing pretty well so we're quite chuffed with how we're doing. We were established over seven years ago by two women, Holly Tucker and Sophie Cornish and in that seven years what we've done is have some phenomenal growth. Basically we're an online marketplace for working with thousands of small creative businesses from designer makers, retailers and design for manufacturing companies. Effectively, we provide the website, we provide the customers, our partners, our sellers provide the products. So we're a sales platform where people can buy from thousands of different types of products. At the present time, we've got over 2 million unique visitors to the site per month, and we're expecting that to double in time for Christmas for, to over 4 million per month. So in seven years, not too bad. And last year, we had 65% increase on our sales from 2011, which brought us up to sales of over 43 million, and we're already set to exceed that growth this year. So pretty exciting times. In terms of um, what we have and what we offer, which makes us a little bit different from other online marketplaces, which you may be familiar with, is notonthehighstreet.com is a curated marketplace. So we don't accept every application for people who want to sell with us. And that's where my role comes in, which personally I think is a great job. I get to go through all of the applications from the small businesses who apply to sell with us and decide which applications we feel show potential, which products are going to be the next big sellers and get to move forward with, with those small businesses and bring them onto our sales platform. It also means that what we're doing is offering our customers the products that we know they'll love and keeping up and maintaining our brand of high quality, innovative products. We also support our partner community with resources, which is what Jenny is going to share with you some of those today. We've got online courses, events and workshops where we share a lot of the learning that we're taking every single day. Because although we've had a lot of growth over the past seven years, we know there's still a long way to go. So capturing the learning from our partners as well as from our own experiences is one of the key things that we think sets our platform aside. So hopefully at the event we're at today, we don't need to ask the question in too much detail as to why sell online. I think some of the examples we've already had this morning show that in the UK in particular, we shop online, we shop with our smartphones, um, and we are trusting ever more online shopping, particularly in the run-up to Christmas, which is a key time of year for notonthehighstreet.com. Customers are now shopping later online. They trust shopping online. So to be up and running and have that online presence is really key. Also, you've got the minimal overheads that just don't exist with the bricks and mortar shops. Um, you can have free publicity through all of the various social media platforms we've spoken about today, your Facebooks, LinkedIn, Twitter. Pinterest is a really huge one for us at the minute as well and growing every, um, every month. And it also has that market reach where you can ship internationally. You don't really have the same borders that you've got with a bricks and mortar shop. And also, it's just expected these days in terms of, of where people can get hold of you, get hold of your contact information and get hold of your products. Even when we're out and about sourcing for new products at local craft markets and fairs, we hear customers every day asking stallholders, how can I get you online? How can I find your products online? They want to be able to send links to their friends and family today. Should we get this for mom? Is this the right present to get? People need to have that connection with online. So, Hopefully, we're all on board with wanting to have that online presence, see the importance of it, which is what we're all here to do today. What Jenny is going to take you through now is how to really make sure you're presenting those products in the optimum way so that you've got the maximum potential to make those sales and for customers to find the products that they're going to love. 
Thank you, Ola. I think Ola and I are in a really great position in that we both think our job is the best one because yeah. I get to come out and do events and workshops online and offline to our small business sellers and talk to them about presenting their products. So because we're a marketplace, um, our partners provide the photography and details about their products and I get to work with them on how to do that most effectively. It is one of my absolute favourite things to talk about in the entire world. So um, I'm going to hopefully bring that across today. Um, when I started at NotOnTheHighStreet.com four years ago, my job was product presentation. I worked with partners and on our campaigns to make sure that once we'd got the customer to our site, they had everything they need to be able to make a purchase. And I did a lot of research into what was motivating our customers and what they really preferred to see for different types of products. So very geeky, but very exciting as well to have that understanding of what motivates customers within the online world. So, as Ola was saying, we're getting more and more comfortable with shopping online now. And online shoppers are more and more savvy about what they're seeing and what they're looking for. So, they get fussy. Um, and apart from the, uh, what I like to call the eBay effect, um, in terms of photography, where people are just uploading their iPhone snaps onto the internet, um, we do find that customers are, are more and more dismissive of small presentation errors and glitches that might come across. We make decisions very quickly as humans um, in terms of visual representation. So it's very easy to turn people off your products as well as draw them in once you've got the right stuff there. So essentially, you know, we are based on product selling. We don't really sell services at this point in time. Um, and it's very important that the product is as clear as possible and as engaging as possible to the online audience. They can't pick it up, they can't turn it around and see the back and they can't touch it and see how heavy it is and that kind of thing. So your product presentation is really a way to do that in the online equivalent way. Um, so this is starting off with looking at the first glance that you have. These are the things that as people are browsing online, um, looking for things, whether it, they have something specific in mind or whether they're just looking out of interest, the first glance is absolutely your, your prime opportunity to get them engaged in your product and what it's all about. Um, we obviously are very much gifting as well as self-purchase and we find that people, because of the nature of our products, that they are innovative and original. Customers aren't necessarily looking for something specific. They're not going to Google the uh, personalized coordinates print. They don't know that they want it yet. So the first glance for us at least is absolutely essential to make sure that we're showing the uniqueness of the product, the essential quality to the product. So starting off with the SEO, making sure that the SEO that you have for your site and your pages um, is effective and working for you. Um, we recommend that our partners are always updating this, monitoring it, as well as us internally as well. Um, primarily, they work on our site, asks our partners to input some key terms, and we ask them to, you know, just simple things like Googling your key terms, seeing what else comes up there. If you've got Amazon at the top three slots for whatever product you're key term you're offering, you're probably not going to battle it out with Amazon. Trying to find something that's more unique and um, still getting the search results is probably the best thing to do. So once you've got customers engaging in your product, whether it's through Google Shopping or they've come to your site and they're starting to have a look around, um, we certainly find that photography is the ultimate best selling thing that you can invest in. Um, and it's something that I can talk a lot about. So before I launch fully into my um, geekiness. How many people do work on product photography themselves? And how many people use professional photographers? Yeah. OK, so hopefully a couple of different things. One of the things that I work with our partners on is not only product presentation, but brand development, because that's one of the key things with how you present your products. Essentially, you want to have a consistent brand across your entire range that when people are coming across your products, they're associating it with you and the high quality that you offer. So. Photography here, these are a couple of products that are on our site next to each other on our prints and pictures category. And um, this is some photography that we provided for the partner. This is very much our branding. Um, and just to talk you through a couple, a few details of these photographs and how they're working. Um, these prints are great examples because they're very eye-catching of themselves. They're brightly colored, they stand out, they jump out at you as something that is interesting and unique and very personal to the customer. Um, what we did with the photography here is really looked at drawing that out even more. We didn't put anything distracting behind the, the image. We used a very plain background. Our brand is very much about muted colors, um, simple and relevant props, making sure we're telling the story of the product. Essentially, a lot of the products on our website are about helping the customers tell their own story, whether it's through 
um, the coordinates of their new home that they've brought together or um, sharing some moments through this personalised uh, likes poster print. So essentially we want to be able to tell the story of the product which in itself tells the story of the customer. We're very much about storytelling in the propping that we do and we very much want the style of the photography to allow that to come through. We also look at product titles very specifically. I'm going to talk a bit more about photography, don't worry. I, I can talk all day about it. But just um, on a note about product titles, very much interlinked with SEO. Um, very essential that customers know exactly what they're looking at, particularly with the sorts of products that we sell on the, on the site um, that our partners create or source for us. Um, a lot of them might not be readily available. So it's very important that we're calling them something that is engaging and relevant and easy to read. We always ask them to look at simple things like grammar, making sure that the product title is structured in a way that is easy to read and makes sense. It's those little details that start to make it more engaging. So very much about making sure that the products are clear and stand out in your first glance. Um, photography, like I just love talking about it so much, but um, <laughs> this is just a range of the different products that we've worked on to make sure that um, we have a consistent brand approach. Um, very much uh, important that your product's taking up the biggest proportion of the frame. Whatever, wherever your customers are seeing the image, whether it's in Google Shopping, whether it's on your site or your blog or social media, just proportionally within the frame, your product should take up about 80% of the shot. Not a hard and fast rule, there are exceptions, including this uh, product in the middle here. Um, but that's, that's the general rule, so that they really know what they're looking at. And before they even click through to consider buying the, the product, they know what they're looking at. So here we've got earrings, teeny tiny earrings, but still very much um, the main part of the image here. In the middle, we've got this brilliant uh, safety pin tea towel holder, which is a product that I've personally fallen in love with and can't stop looking at. Um, the product itself doesn't take up 80% of the frame, but the way we've propped it to show how it is used, because it is quite an unusual product, that, that area itself takes up the majority of the frame there as well. And then with that middle image, we've balanced out the, the photograph using the different propping. We've given a sense of scale, really important with this product in particular, because it is oversized. Um, so we've used the salt and pepper shakers because they're a standard size to give an idea of how that works. And then we've balanced out the, the image with the uh, bowls on the other the other side of the photo. Um, and that just gives a, a lighter feel to it. We, we've got quite a dark background. We wouldn't want to make it feel too overcast um, as an image. And then I, I stuck a little example of a greetings card in here, partly because um, there's always an interesting balance of how much you invest in product presentation versus the cost of the product itself. You don't want to eat into your product profit margins too much with how much you're investing. Cards are also incredibly difficult to shoot because they're usually white. Um, and we find that that is one of the things that our partners struggle with the most, especially when you've got very delicate, very intricate details on the stationary products, um, as we do here. So the personalization is absolutely key with this product. Really important that the customer, at first glance, when they're just browsing the internet, can see that the product is personalized, it's got names, it's chosen carefully to tell the customer's story when they're giving this card. This particular image, um, we were lucky that the card came with a red envelope because that adds a block color to the photo, which is really helpful. Um, but similarly, we've also added the lovely washi tape, which we've all um, become obsessed with in the office, um, to add a pop of color so that you haven't just got a very white blur of information. You're adding some definition through the colors that you're using that coordinate with the colors of the product. I think that's really essential that you know, part of our branding, part of the recommendations we give to our partners in terms of their branding is that you work with a colour palette that suits your product, that draws out the qualities of them and adds consistency across the range. We're very much about natural light, lifestyle, imagery or not on the highstreet.com. That's part of our brand. Um, it's something that we know that our customers engage with very much. It is about telling that story. It is about showing the customer how the product can be used within their life, within their home. Um, and that is absolutely about natural light and props that are relevant and tell the story of the product. If you have any questions about product photography, I'm really happy to answer them because I genuinely could talk about it all day. But I will now move on to just talking about that second step, really. So you've got the customer engaged at first glance with your product. They click through to the product page to your site, um, and they're reading more about it. That's your second sales pitch, almost, um, to give them all the information that they need to then make a purchase. Um, 
starting off with product descriptions, very much um, on our site, we find that we like to tell the story of the product. That's what our customers ask for. They want clear details in full sentences about the products that we're offering. That might be different depending on your customer base and depending on your products. Um, you might find that bullet points, you know, especially um, as we've heard already this morning in stuff like technology and cameras, certainly bullet points with specific technical specifications work really well. With our products um, and the products that you find on our site, it is more about telling the story. It is more about full sentences, clear, concise, consistent. There's a load of research now on um, how much our attention spans are shortening online um, and how to group text on a page. I think the general wisdom is that four lines of copy is probably the, the optimum amount. Um, and after that, you need to start breaking it down. Um, that's certainly the, the wisdom of online newspapers and that kind of thing. Uh, and we've certainly found that on notonthehighstreet.com. We try not to have big, massive chunks of text um, on the product pages. So adding cons concise and clear sentences that read well grammatically, um, that are easy to digest in for the customer, and making sure you've got all the details. You know, one of the things we recommend to our partners is if they're getting a question over and over again from customers who aren't making a purchase because they don't know something, you need to add that back into your product description. So taking in that feedback and making sure that you're adding to that information all the time is really essential. We've talked a bit about options already this morning. Um, we certainly, uh, with the types of products that we offer, um, particularly those that are highly personalized or bespoke and personal in another way, um, on the products page itself, we have um, a general rule, which is that if you've got 10 option menus, um, you need to start looking at how you can consolidate that information a little bit more. So especially with personalization and adding in your own text or images or um, other details that we ask for, um, we certainly don't go over that mark. And then delivery options. I mean, for us, this is absolutely essential, especially if we get into to Christmas time. Um, having a range of delivery options offering free delivery for a longer period of time um, and then offering the express services as well. Different customers have different needs and the more that you're able to expand your offering in terms of delivery, the more that you're able to get different customers to buy from you as well. And then just to get back onto photography a little bit, because I love talking about it so much, having thumbnail images. So your first image is going to draw the customer in. Your thumbnail images are going to sell the product over and over again. So you're showing the full detail of the quality of the product, how it can be used. You're telling more of a story. Your main image might have um, propping and styling that appeals to your cool customer base. But then as you go through to the product page, you want to tell more of a story and appeal to a different range of customers. So you might have a very masculine main image because your cool customer is male, but then you might have softer images that are more feminine on your product page itself. So you're showing the versatility of the product. So I think that's, that's pretty much it for adding to the shopping experience once you get to the product page. I guess um, it's always about engaging the right audience, using market research, checking that um, you're feeding back what you learn about your customers into the way you present your products. The more you know about your customer base, the more you can refine your product presentation and the way that you're branding yourself um, to make sure you're appealing to the right people. Definitely considering how you can broaden your appeal to a wider customer base by presenting your products in a different way. Sometimes it's not about developing a new product. It's just about showing your existing product in a different context. Um, using and sharing examples Obviously, we're very much about personalization at notonthehighstreet.com, but also new product development ideas, inspirational images through all the social media channels, just to get customers engaging with your brand and how that works. So I hope that helps. Um, very much my recommendation would be to invest in the first glance, so improving the SEO and click-through rates that you have for your site and for your products. Um, following through, so refreshing and revising your product descriptions and product page options, making sure that they are working to convert your products effectively. And then photography is absolutely your best friend, especially if you're working with um, similar businesses and similar products to what we're selling at notonthehighstreet.com, making the most of your products through the visual re representation. We're very visually driven as human beings, so that is a full um, opportunity there to make sure that that's working for you, and then always having your customer in mind so that you're targeting them effectively through the, the way you present your products. It started just probably about eight years ago now when Holly and Sophie first started coming up with the idea of 
looking around in their, in their social groups at their, with their friends, always wanting to try and find that product that somebody was like, oh, where did it come from? Where did you get that? And it was always from, oh, some little craft market in Exeter or in such and such boutique, or I was on holiday and I found this when we were up visiting the in-laws in Edinburgh or whatever it might be. And um, Holly kind of had the idea of, wouldn't it be wonderful to have one place where you could find all those products? And also, wouldn't it be absolutely brilliant to give a plan platform to all of the many thousands of really brilliant creative designer makers who are sitting throughout um, the UK and Ireland now as well, um, making these wonderful products um, and who are crafting away and, and coming up with these new ideas, um, but just generally don't, as a whole series of individuals, have the market reach to kind of capture the audience. So by pulling all of those different people and talented um, areas together and having that one platform, but also letting our customers know that we've selected the products, we've selected these people, so you are going to be try going to find a product of a innovative quality um, and of the right kind of um, creativity that it's going to fit with your lifestyle. It's going to be the products you want, but they're all there in a one-stop shop. So that was their light bulb moment. And then a lot of, I think, kind of how could we make this work came into play, how are we going to get the money together came into play, and Holly and Sophie worked really closely together from their kitchen table and have since written and, and launched the book, Building a Business from Your Kitchen Table, which is how they absolutely came up with the idea, but is also how so many of our partners started off as well. Um, so they managed to secure a few different rounds of funding, and it was in, April seven years ago that the, the site first went live and many of the same people who are still with the company now were there I think on on that first day when they put the switch on and said go <laughs> which I think was quite a really anxious and, and such a period of hard work for, for all of the guys who were involved there so at that stage there were two in the company we're now at over 130 based in Richmond and um, our tech team is ever growing but we've also got um, a really dedicated creative team who are the people who make our site and our brand look beautiful. We've got the partner community team, which Jenny's part of, who host our online forum, which we've got for our partners, which is a hub where they can come together to, to share their knowledge and their experiences as well, which is one of the things that's really important because obviously so many of our partners maybe work by themselves and don't have kind of access to that support. So we've got that kind of hub as well, as well as our marketing team, which covers social media, TV ad campaigns, national press campaigns, customer emails, all of that. And then the team that I'm part of is part of our commercial team, which is where we've got the account managers in place who are there as that point of contact um, for, the, for the partners and the merchandisers who are selecting and curating the products that we're going to promote and generally putting together our collections and making everything look really beautiful. Wonderful. And do the craftspeople come to you or do you find them? We do a bit of both. We okay. get um, a lot of applications every single day and so unfortunately we're not in a position to be able to take all of those applications forward. Um, if, if we do turn down an application it's not necessarily because we think the product or the business isn't viable, it's just we know what works for our customers. Um, so we do get a lot of organic applications coming in but another part of my job which I'm going to try and chump down again, makes it the best job, is I get to go out and about, I go to fairs, travel to different towns and markets, trying to find these new designers and, and approach them and say, have you thought about selling with us? Oh, I see. And how many are on there now? We've got just over 3,800 partners at the minute. Brilliant. Yeah. And it's a British company. Yeah, we're based in Richmond. Yeah. <laughs>